So this is Build a Better Business. I am Kathy Benner, and we're going to just kind of take you through some of the, the uh, formulas today that we're using. Sherry is with us. Sherry is my co-mod today. And we've also got Karen and we have Kyle. So welcome, everyone. And I am uh, going to, first of all, um, share a little bit about what we're doing under Build a Better Business. Um, this program is everything from, from creating your value proposition statement, your VPS, which we talked about in the month of January. And then in February, it's all about storytelling, which is my favorite topic, my favorite month. And from there, we go into how to, to build our websites. And then once we start working on our websites, we start building out our products, our, our free offer, our first base, second base, third base, finally our home run. And, um, and there's Karen back again. And then we, um, we continue on then once we get all of our products built, then we start talking about how are we going to market these products. And we can market them by uh, getting on podcast, uh, podcast and telling folks about our products, or we can blog, or we can put out posts across social media, or we can be a public speaker. And I always say, you know, don't say no to public speaking. Most people go, oh, no, I'm not a public speaker. Well, don't say no to that up front because when you are speaking, and again, once you have your story, which is February's topic, once you have your story, then you can always go back to your story and it's your story. So nobody knows if you have it right or wrong because it's your story. So you can just always hook into your story when you're marketing, your storytelling becomes your marketing. And that way, no matter when you're asked to, to, to speak, you can um, speak without having to prepare a speech actually, because it's your story that you're going to always use as your go-to speech, so to speak. So anyway, today we're going to talk about how to build that story. And that's the important part because I don't know about you, but a lot of us, we have a lot of parts and pieces to our story. And it's like, well, what's relevant if I'm trying to market a particular uh, product or, or I'm trying to, you know, create something that I can monetize, how do I decide what part of my story is relevant? And I want to share with you that it's called the hero's journey. And the hero's journey is, um, we've got Samuel coming in, let me let him in. And the hero's journey is where you start saying, I have a problem. And then you, 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 it's a big circle and you start around that circle and you say, I have this problem and here are some solutions that I, I think I'm going to try to solve my problem. And so then as you go around that circle and you come up with some solutions, you think, okay, this is working. Well, then maybe something doesn't work quite as well. And you go, okay, well, now I have to adjust this solution. I have to look for another solution. Or I thought I had the solution and then someone pulled the rug out from under me. Anybody feel like that before in your life? You're thinking, okay, here is my solution. Okay, Sherry says she has to leave at 1050. I get that, not a problem. And so as you go around that hero's journey, you, you find your solution, you struggle with your solution, you maybe find a better solution, you keep working, you're climbing that mountain, and you finally feel like you now have some, some tools that you can use to solve your problems, and now you want to help other people do the same thing. And so you want to work that story in. And someone says, well, wonder if I don't have a story. What do I do then? Well, and, and let me give you a perfect example. Um, I work with a doctor who says, I want to talk about weight loss, but he says, I've never had a problem with weight loss. He said, but I see so many people that do that. He said, that's what I want to bring a solution to that. He said, but how do I weave my story when I really don't have a, a weight loss story? How do I, how do I do that? And so what I advised him to do is go back to some of his clients, of course, you know, you can't use their names because you have to keep everything private um, because of, of the privacy laws. But he can say, you know, I had this lady once and this was her issue. And these are all the struggles that she had. And here's how I was able to help her. And so he can actually borrow, if you will, someone else's story. And so no matter what product is that you're selling, you can either use your story like I had this problem and I finally discovered this solution, or I had a client that had this problem and here's how we 
worked through their solution. And because what you want to bring to your audience is that you can help them. You want to enter the conversation in their heads to where you're, you're answering the questions they have. And so um, I work with Kyle quite closely in uh, real estate. And one of my passive income lanes, of course, is, is purchasing real estate. And so Kyle has not had all the same experiences that I have had or that a lot of his clients have had, but he can tap into their stories and he can even say, oh, I had this client and this is what she went through and here's how I was able to help her. And so he can draw all those stories into his solutions when he is working with brand new clients himself. So anyway, that's I wanted to share that to get started. Um, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you exactly um, how to find information that we're talking about today. Um, first of all, this is the home screen of the Kathy Benner International Academy. You can um, just Google that or search for that Kathy Benner International Academy and it'll come up. And I'm on the platform called Teachable. And once you open that up, you'll see all of our programs. Now, the programs here on the very left column, these are all free meetups. So we have a Fit as a Fiddle program that's free. We have uh, the long-term real estate. We have the short-term real estate. And here is Build a Better Business. And this is where we are today as we're in this program right here. Then we have newbie bloggers, how to create and monetize a blog. We have how to write from anywhere in the world. And then we have connections over coffee, which is uh, our time to give to make the world a better place. And we're creating nonprofits in that group. And then finally, the last one is networking and it's how to create and run a mastermind. These are all free here on this left column. So you can tap into as many as those as you want. Uh, once you register for the academy, It'll let you go to all those free ones and all of the times, dates, Zoom codes, everything you'll find inside that, uh, if you click on that, uh, that uh, icon. In the center are courses. These are all uh, courses that go with those free meetups. And as you can see, um, we have built a better business course and that's where we're gonna go to next. Uh, but every one of them has a course. A couple of them are still coming soon like this one. And then uh, last but not least, I'll go back to the top over on the far right, everything has a mastermind. And the mastermind is a paid mastermind. It's $25 a month. You can join two of those for the same $25, any two that you'd like. And as you go down through there, just keep in mind that if you choose to join a mastermind, again, such as this Build a Better Business Mastermind, you get the course for free. So don't buy the course and the mastermind. Because if you get the mastermind, you automatically get the course. So that just gives you an overview of where everything is. Uh, today, we're going to go into this course. And I want to talk about um, these five tips for including storytelling in your sales strategy. So whatever your product is. And again, we talked about last month what our VPS was, our value proposition statement, who we are and what we're doing for whom. And for example, mine is I'm Kathy Benner, I'm a passive income coach, and I help folks create income without having to punch a time clock. And so once you can work on your VPS, now it's a work in progress, and, and uh, Sherry will, will attest to this as well, we're constantly tweaking our VPS because as we get more clarity, we realize we want to make our VPS more clear to what we're offering to our clients. So anyway, it's a, it's a process. So don't feel like you have to nail it down and put it in print and can never change it because you're going to work on that. It's, it's going to be a process. And um, Debbie is not with us today. She had a, a, an appointment this morning and couldn't be with us. But she told me that she went through this whole program and, and she kind of got it. But the second time she went through it is when it really made sense because she could see the whole completed process. And then when she went through it a second time, she said she had a lot more clarity on what she wanted her value proposition statement to be once she had more clarity as to what product she even wanted to offer. So anyway, when you're talking about storytelling in your sales strategy, it's how to build a great story. You have to start with the basics of a, of a good story. 
It involves the main character, challenge that character faces, and the character getting past a roadblock. See, that's that hero's journey I was telling you about. You're the main character and how you struggled and then how you came up with the solution. And then you have to determine what idea you want to communicate. What is the key takeaway that you want the listener to get after you finish your story? So knowing your end game is going to make it that much easier to build out the framework for the story. So you see where it's so hard to say we're going to do the VPS in January, then we're going to build our story in February, because it's not until you start creating your products and services and what you want those to look like and, and finding your, your theme, so to speak, and your vein of where you want to stay, that then you go back and say, well, now I need to add this to my story, or I need to tweak my story a little bit, or I need to change my VPS a little bit. So it, it is a work in progress. And so then what you want your takeaway to be, um, and again, that's usually after you determine what kind of products that you want. It wasn't for a while that I realized that I wanted to use the phrase passive income coach in my VPS and in my story. And it wasn't until I started talking about my products and realizing that that's where most of my products landed that that's, I then had to go back and, and correct some of those things. But you also have to get the attention of your audience. Stories are meant to be captivating as well as informative. So you have to put yourself in the listener's shoes and ask yourself, is this a story you'd want to hear? You have to use phrases that everyone is familiar with and keep the language short and punchy. So many people, when they're trying to create their story or their VPS or their products, they try to get all of these fancy words. They try to, I don't know if they're, they want to make themselves sound smarter. I'm not sure what that's about. Um, but I'll give you a perfect example in our um, blogging class. We're talking about naming our blogs, you know, what kind of a name we want for our blogs. Well, I'll back up a step further. Um, I came from the salon industry and all the girls in the salon industry, their dream was to own their own salon someday. And I said, OK, that's great. That's great. And so then they would finally get the opportunity and they would name their salon some kind of a name that nobody even knew what it was. And one of them, their, their salon name was Carpe Diem. Well, that's Seize the Day in Latin. And everybody that would drive by there would say, is that a carpet store? <laughs> it was a salon but see the girl thought she was being very creative naming her salon carpe diem but nobody driving by knew what it was and another one they they named their salon um oh gosh what what was it um oh it was something french and people would drive by and they thought it was an art studio because it was this French name and it was all these curly Q letters that you really couldn't read from the street. And, and everybody is like, boy, we're really nervous because all of the Asian nail salons are doing so well and we're not. And I said, that's because you drive by and it says nails. <laughs> You girls are naming your salons. You're trying to get so creative and nobody knows who you are or what you're doing. You're not communicating your story or your title or your VPS to your consumer. So you have to really make it simple. And I can't stress that enough. Really make it simple. And then practice makes perfect. Once you start working with your story, you're going to always have that as your go-to, no matter what somebody asks you. And we're going to talk a little bit about how you can create your story to actually fit several different audiences. And the last but not least point is to make it personal. Um, and if it's not a story about you, like I was saying before, if you're like I was working with the doctor and he said, well, I don't have a weight loss problem. How can I weave my story when I don't have a story. And now he's weaving some of his clients' stories, but he's making it personal. He's making it personal that this is how I was able to help this person. And so he's still making it very, very personal. So anyway, that are, that, that's the five tips for including in your storytelling. So now I want to talk about this. When you scroll to the bottom um, and you can see down here at the bottom, there is a template. And I'm just going to jump over and show you that template in work. And Sherry has seen this. A couple others have already seen this. This is my website. And I have used the template that's right there in the course to create my story. So when I scroll down, and this is my work with me page here under kathybenner.com. Anybody that wants to pull up kathybenner.com, you can look at my website. And it's my work with me page. 
And when I scroll down, this is how I wrote my story. Now, what you see here in the parentheses, that, that is the template. Let me tell you a quick story. Then something happened that changed my life forever. At the time, I had no idea the impact this would have, the problem was. That's the template. So keep that in mind, and you're certainly welcome to either go to the course, the Kathy Benner International Academy course, and, and click on that template link in the course, or go to my website, kathybenner.com, and just look at this template. Then what you do is you make some bullet points. Now, we had a girl the other day that was in the course, and she actually actually put the little bullets in front of her bullet points. Now I did not, I removed the little bullets there, but she actually kept the little bullets in front and literally wrote it out in bullet points. But on the quick story, you wanna put down what your problem was. That's your beginning of your story. My problem, see, is that I was a single mom working two jobs, both minimum wage with no health insurance, and I was living payday to payday with no extra cash for emergencies. Now, did you see how I made it very simple, to the point, and very personal? See, because this is my story. I had a car that I couldn't keep running, and even worse, I had no means to save toward retirement. So you see, that was my problem. And that's a pretty big problem. Single mom, minimum wage job, no health insurance, no cash, no savings, no retirement. That was my problem. But then something happened that changed my life forever. This is what we call your aha moment. What was your aha moment? My aha moment was when my mom sat me down and had a talk with me about getting on with it. And I didn't know what that meant. And she meant I, I needed to just get on with making more money, getting some savings. Uh, you know, getting ready for retirement. And I was 40 years old when my mom sat me down and gave me that talk. And, and she told me, she said, Kathy, you've been, you've been out here for 40 years. You're 40 years old. She said, you've been working, you know, for a good 20 years from age 20 to age 40. And she said, and you don't hardly have anything to show for it. And she said, you only have 20 more years to create a retirement for yourself. How are you going to do that? And that was an aha for me because I thought, I, I better figure something out. I have to do something. So you see, I, I, I explained my problem and then my big moment on, on the realization that I had to make a change. And so I had met an LTEC that was making more income in one week than I made in a month. And so, and here's where I fast tracked the story. I decided to attend nail school, which is cosmetology school, but we finally called it nail school, and to become a part-time nail tech. Now, you see where I, I kind of summed up that story in a sentence where I decided to attend nail school and become a nail tech. Well, if I'm giving a talk to a group, a group of cosmetologists, I could talk my entire talk on just that paragraph. You see that? Because it's my story. So if they asked me to come and talk to cosmetologists about how did I go from working in corporate America to becoming a nail tech and, and creating some salons of my own, if they asked me to come and talk about that, I can spend my whole talk right here in these three lines because it's my story. I can say how I, how I had to research all the different schools and then how I had to decide how I was going to come up with the money and was I going to get a grant or was I going to make payments or was I going to borrow the money? See, I can create a whole story, but I didn't put all of that in this story, but I could because it's there. It's insinuated. I obviously found the money to go and to become a part-time nail tech. Now, I, at the time, and again, here's the prompt. I had no idea the impact this would have. The problem was, okay, well, what was the problem? Well, now I was working full-time at my corporate job, part-time as a nail tech, and I had no time for my daughter because I was always racing from one job to the other. And again, I'm just writing this in bullet points. Uh, but now, depending on what group I'm talking to, let's say I'm talking to a group of moms, let's say, um, I'm just going to pull something out of the air, let's just say a local church asked me to come and, and speak to their mom's group. I could talk about time. You see, I could, I could make a whole talk out of these two lines. <laughs> you see where your story becomes the cornerstone of everything that you're doing. You can pull any part of your story that you need to, depending on your audience. 
So just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, the nail salon I signed on with decided to close. My corporate position was changing into a mandatory bachelor degree position, but I had no time to go back to school for my bachelor degree. Okay, so now let's say that I'm talking to a group of students. I could make a whole talk out of these two sentences, you know, about going to college, getting a degree, or deciding to do a technical program instead. See, so I can, again, I can pull out any part of my story. Now, I was on the downward slide because the owners of the nail salon decided it was too much work for them to continue operating a salon with kids of their own at home. And the owners of the corporate company was hoping, hoping to sell and retire. And the new big corporate buyer wanted everyone to have that bachelor degree. And here's the prompt. Needless to say, I felt panicked. How could I support myself and my daughter without these two jobs? I started researching local colleges to get my bachelor degree as soon as possible to try and keep my corporate job. And I started visiting nail salons to find a new salon. See, again, depending on my audience, I could, I could make a whole talk around feeling panicked, depending on what company, organization, whoever wanted me to, to be their keynote speaker or, or a breakout speaker or even on a podcast. You see how I can tailor this story no matter where I am to whatever audience I'm talking to. Now, that's when I truly hit rock bottom. I showed up for work to the nail salon and it was locked with a big for sale sign in the window. The salon had closed. The next day I showed up for my corporate job and my boss told me I needed to work more hours. My mandatory 50 plus hours a week was not enough for the new owners and I was exhausted from the commute and the work hours. And here's the next prompt. This meant, what did it mean? Well, it meant I panicked and started looking for yet a third job. My mom was exhausted from taking care of my dad who had been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And my mom was also watching my ADHD daughter while I was trying to figure out what to do. There's a whole, there's a whole keynote right there. What if I'm talking to a group of, of nurses or doctors or someone in the medical profession? And I can go through and, and expand on the story of how my dad was diagnosed and, and, and wonder if I'm talking to a group of caregivers. See, I can, use, I can use those three sentences and create a whole keynote right there. Again, the prompt, that's when I decided that I needed to go full-time as a nail tech since the income was better than my corporate job. With my nail tech income, I decided to buy my first home all by myself, a condo. With my nail tech income, I was also able to afford health insurance for myself and my daughter. Then something happened that changed everything. That's the prompt. I found a new salon where the owners had nail techs, hairstylists, and tanning beds. I realized as owners, they were collecting rent from me and from all the other independent contractors. And it occurred to me that I could buy my own building and rent it out to nail techs, hairstylists, and add tanning. So in 20 years, my staff could buy me a building and that could be for my immediate income and my retirement income. You see how that was a huge aha moment for me. See, it says then something happened that changed everything. This was my second, my first aha moment was when my mom sat me down and had a talk with me that I needed to do something different. My second aha moment was when I discovered how I could do it different. You see, that's, and this is what you want to bring to your audience. This is what they want to know that you figured it out. If you're going to lead them up the mountain, they want to know that you made it <laughs> up the mountain yourself, okay? So that was the spark that I needed. I was scared but optimistic to get a commercial loan to buy my very own salon building. I knew I was on the right path. And then here's what happened next. I learned everything I could about the salon industry. I made two additional mortgage payments each year to pay off the building earlier than the 20-year note. And again, in the next prompt, then one day I looked up and I realized I could now, well, what could I do? I could now buy four more salon buildings and I could sign on even more stylists and nail techs to pay rent to me. I also started buying single family rentals to help grow my passive income and my retirement income. Now I was forever changed by the fact that that now I had passive income and freedom to live the lifestyle I always wanted. I could work less hours. I could even homeschool my daughter her last four years of high school. And I started a new healthy lifestyle. 
So now I saw myself in control, confident, and a good provider for the first time ever. I saw myself as a business owner. I received the Chamber of Commerce Business of the Year Award. Then I received the Chamber of Commerce Entrepreneur of the Year Award. And that's why I knew I couldn't stop there. You see the prompts. I realized I needed to teach you how to do what I have done. I needed to make getting healthy and creating passive income even easier for you. Now I am focusing on creating a step-by-step -step process for others to discover what is their next best step in getting healthy and creating passive income. And I'm focusing on creating this user-friendly website and I'm creating an online international academy. I am able to, we're almost to the end, I'm able to help individuals and entrepreneurs just like you go from panic to passive income, plus have some fun getting healthy. This makes me feel like there's so much more for me to do. I'm just getting started. And again, remember, you have to have a point. That was in one of the five tips we just discovered. What I'd like you to take away from all this, what is the takeaway, is that no matter how tough things are, keep going, never stop learning, simply start to find your next best step to getting healthy, growing your passive income, and finally, freestyle living today. So that is how you can use the prompts. So with that said, Again, I want to share with you that once you craft your story, and again, you only want two or three sentences under each one of these prompts. I know there's a whole keynote behind every prompt, but you just want two or three sentences under each prompt, then that story is going to become an accordion. If somebody says, um, you know, literally your elevator speech it's called your elevator speech. If somebody steps into the elevator with you and they go, oh, well, what is it that you do? Well, I'm a passive income coach and I help you create income without having to punch a time clock. You see, I didn't use big words. I didn't go on and on and on. I just gave them a sentence on what it is that I did. But depending on where I am, somebody can say, how did you get into the salon business? I can expand on that part of my story. If somebody says, how did you get into the real estate business? I can expand on that part of the story. Somebody can say, oh my gosh, what was it like taking care of elderly parents you know, while you were still working full time? I could expand on that part of the story. You see where I can take any part of my story and expand and, and it becomes the cornerstone. And because every single time I can turn it around to how that piece of my story helped me discover how to create passive income. And that's what I'm trying to sell is passive income courses, passive income masterminds. And so I can take any piece of my story and circle it back to, but then I now can show you how to do passive income as well if you're in the same kind of scenario. Does that make sense to everybody? I wanted to just kind of show you how that fits together and how it works. So comments, questions. Um, and I know Sherry has, has her story, but I don't think she has it quite down in writing yet. But um, any comments or questions on that? And I see we've got some comments here in the chat. Let me just see. Um, oh, <laughs> Kyle was, was on a call. He heard his name. Yeah, we were talking about real estate. Yeah. And so don't forget, you can go to my website, which is just kathybinner.com, and you can look at those prompts and help you craft your story. Um, what is some, some thoughts? Sherry, give us some of your thoughts on this subject so far. Okay, so I think this is the third time I've heard you read this in the last two or three weeks. Right. And as I'm sitting here, I'm going, what do I put in that spot? So you got me thinking a little bit more now. So let me go back to what I just said. And that is sometimes you need to hear it three, four, five times before you can take it from that level of total education to application. So I'm, I've been doing a lot of problem solving um, with some of my messaging and I, I, I know my, uh, th okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to steal it because I'm, I'm taking this course right now. I, I have my crowning jewel component. It is life success. Um, it is, 
is the the end game is as my with my students and my teachers we want the students to be ha even though they have a disability to be successful at life and as i'm going through that you know i have this kind of nonchalant story and trying to find those highlights uh, i got to go back again but i'm trying to pull this thing together because I don't have much time left by March. I want to have four contracts. So I'm losing, I, I have time. So thank you. And this time I was just, I wasn't even looking at what you were, were saying. I was just auditorily trying to process it going, how does that apply to me? So right. how, if that helps either any of you that are on the call or listening to this later, sometimes you need to hear what someone is saying three, four, five times before you can then be able to apply it to you. So that, that's where I was at today. Thank you for that, Sherry, because I was there for, I'm going to say six months before I could write my story into those prompts, because I kept thinking, I don't have a story. What's, what's my exciting story, you know? And so how do I put a story together? And that has become my cornerstone, which is what I'm, I'm trying to share with all of you is that your story is the cornerstone of your business because now it's all about relationships. So now no matter where I go, no matter what room I'm in, no matter if it's virtual or in person, you know, I could go to a dinner party and the person next to me can say, you know, well, what is it that you do? Well, what they're really asking is what's your story? You know, what's your story? They're, they, they're wanting to get to know me better and they want to know, well, what's your story? Well, now see, because I have it, and, and one of the five points we talked about earlier was practice, because I have put that in writing and I have now practiced that story. See, I can use that story and I can expand or, or, or decrease that story depending on the amount of time that I have. And I can use the same story all the time, different parts of it. And so if I met somebody and they say something like, um, you know, well, how did you and Mark meet and what are you doing? You know, oh, well, we met ballroom dancing and then, you know, we, we started, um, you know, dating. And then once I got into the salon business, he helped me on my first real estate purchase. See, I can just weave that story. You know, anytime you're talking to somebody, you're going to go back with your little crochet hook and you're going to go over here and you're going to hook a piece of your story in. And you're going to go over here and you're going to hook a piece of your story in. And so when somebody is asking me, um, you know, how Mark and I met, um, the first thing that I do is I take the story right down the path to where he helped me buy my first um, salon building and how, he, you know, he, he did the wiring and the plumbing and all of that for me so that I could have my first salon building because I was the single mom. See, I slip right into my story. I was the single mom and I had no income and I didn't know how I was going to make ends meet or, or retire at all. And, and so now I'm able to do that. And that's when now people are like, oh, well, tell me more about this piece or that. And then people will start asking questions and uh, about your story. Uh, if, if again, yeah. if it interests them, see, so yeah. that's where you have so, to be seeing it. Yeah. So there's this one piece of my story that I am trying to really integrate and release that piece so that it makes sense to not just public schools, but private schools and stuff. And we were talking about it at the very beginning before many people jumped on and that I'm writing historical fiction book about disabilities. It's a Bible story, literally a Bible story. I'm taking one of the books of the Bible, I'm expounding on it, and I'm finding more and more information that justifies, logically justifies the story that has been going on in my brain and how to identify that in my call to action that people see up front. I'm working right now with a coach for my LinkedIn profile. And she's like, don't put it there. And I'm refusing to release it because it is part of me that I, that people are going to go, what? And that's, that is part of what I wanted to uh, do that. I have all these uh, 
technical school things. And then I have this historical fiction writer. I'm like, and, and then I qualify because I say disabilities as well. So keep those things gnawing in your brain that that unique outlier piece really is part of you and it's part of the core of you and figuring out how to integrate that is going to be a really big piece of your story. So this is Sherry, I'm done. Well, I can appreciate that. For me, I almost dropped the healthy piece on mine because everybody said, how does getting more healthy actually connect with your passive income? Isn't that two separate lanes? You know, if you're going to talk about fitness and then you're going to talk about creating passive income, how, how do you do that in the same story? Well, I'm a firm believer that health comes before wealth. And so I wanted to make sure that I could tie those two together. So like Sherry, I had to figure out how to tie those together. So bear with me here and see if, if my computer will let me do this without crashing. <laughs> it's, it's when I start moving around is when it, it starts to crash. Let, Sherry, let me know, jump in there if I start to go away and tell me. Um, I'm just gonna scroll down and show you how I tied it together. Yeah, it's telling me that I have low quality. Can you still hear me, Sherry? Give me a thumbs up. Yes, okay. Um, I'm just gonna show you one thing and then I'm gonna stop sharing so I don't crash my system here. When I scroll down, and this is just under kathybenner.com, when I scroll down my homepage and go past all of my products and all of my services, it gets down to my blog. And here's the blog. And here's how I tied mine together. This is my blog, Freestyle Living, because again, I want everyone to have freestyle living, which means being healthy and financially healthy and physically healthy. And here's my paragraph. It says, when asked what surprised him about humanity the most, the Dalai Lama replied, man, because he sacrifices his health in order to make money, then he sacrifices money to recuperate his health. And then he is so anxious about the future that he does not enjoy the present. The result being that he does not live in the present or the future. He lives as if he is never going to die and then dies having never really lived. Well, that quote from the Dalai Lama really impacted me. And it was the perfect opportunity to tie health and wealth together in my platform. And so that's why I have it right here on my home page. And so when somebody said, oh, you need to get rid of all the health stuff, I said, no, because if you don't have your health, what good is having all the passive income if you're lying in the hospital bed hooked up to a bunch of tubes? You know, what good is that? And so I think that the health definitely comes before the wealth. You have to keep yourself healthy as you're, you're going down that path. So you'll notice, and I'm going backwards up my website, you'll notice when you come to my website, the first thing is the fit is a fiddle. It's the, the freebie, the course, and the mastermind. It's the first thing on my website. And, and it says everything health and wellness under fit is a fiddle. Then I go into my long-term real estate. So these are my two main hot buttons, and they're the first two on my website and on my academy page is the fitness course and the long-term real estate. And that's where I live the most is in these two courses. And, and that's where I work the most with clients. So you can see how you can tie things together that maybe you didn't think really fit together you could tie them together under your umbrella. And Sherry is, that's where she's working, doing that now, fitting her, her two things together. Yeah, I'm gonna talk a little bit further. You mentioned that quote from the Dalai Lama. This is a quote that I just came across and I think it really pulls my pieces together. And that is, shame is the greatest form of learned domestic abuse. So we shame these kids that are having disabilities, especially the hidden ones, into trying to mold them into school procedure, and we don't necessarily need to put them there. So I, it may not make any sense, but the 
it, it's it's a work in progress. We're all a work in progress. Yes, I appreciate that. I just added a whole speakers bureau to my website. And again, I'm a work in progress, but um, my word for 2022 is giving and I want to give back. So now as I interview folks on my different channels, I am offering them a free spot on my speakers platform. And then once I get um, at least 20 folks there, I'm going to start marketing that to help folks have a voice so that they can get invited to be on podcasts or so let me know anyone on this call when you're ready <laughs> and you have your story so when you get get on a podcast and somebody wants to interview you you don't have to to sweat wondering what you're going to say or what are they going to ask me and all of that you can have your story and then no matter what they ask you you're just going to tie you know take that crochet hook and you're going to go over and hook a piece of your story in your answer um, no matter wh who you're talking to. Any other comments? Uh, Karen, how about you? What are you thinking? I had a about? question. Sure, go ahead, Vernetta. Um, so when you're talking about the story, I'm just trying to figure out like where this is. Like it makes sense if, like you said, a podcast or if you're blogging or, but just in like every day. So I get the elevator speech that sure, Anytime somebody says, hey, what do you do? There you are, you know, but where, that's, where, that's where actually are we the shortest version of your story? Okay. So where, where are we doing the, the story? Is it just more so knowing what that story is over and over so that you can pull pieces or like, I guess I'm just trying to figure out where like a, a presentation of this length fits okay. into like normal life. Okay. Here's, here's how it's, it's going to fit together. And this might make a lot more sense to everyone. Um, first of all, you want to market, you want to market whatever it is you're selling, because the whole topic today is how to build a better business. So you're trying to build a business. And so you have something for sale, wh whether it's a product or a service, you have something that you want to sell. So now you don't want to be sold when, you know, if you go out to a, a dinner party or you're having a pizza party with all your friends you hate it when the guy comes in and all he's doing is like, you need to buy this for me and I'm selling this and you need to buy this. And you're thinking, we're having pizza here, buddy. You know, come on. We've got the kids and it's, this is just a, a Friday night pizza party. Stop hitting everybody over the head with what you're selling because he doesn't have a story. He's just trying to, to go past the story. You, you don't, you don't really know his reasoning on why this product is so important to him. He, he went straight to the pitch to let's like sign up now. Well, I don't know about you, but we all run from folks like that. Yeah. <laughs> and so having a story, your storytelling becomes your marketing. So now if I'm at a Friday night pizza party and somebody goes, um, gee, Kathy, how was your week this week? I can say, well, you know, I'm really, I'm, I'm working on, you know, my, my courses, my online, your online courses, what online courses? See, it's part of my story. Well, I, once I was a single mom, I, you know, I was working two minimum wage jobs, but then I figured out how to create passive income. And so I created some courses to help other people uh, create passive income. And that's what I've been working on. So see, I just went in and I just hooked a little bit of my story. And now I'm marketing to this person because now they're saying in their heads, well, I'd like to have some passive income, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm not trying. I didn't say you need to buy my course and have passive income. All I did is they said, what do you, hey, what are you, what are you doing this week? I, oh, I'm working on my courses. Well, what courses is that? You know, oh, I, you know, and I just hook in a little bit of my story. And then they might say passive income. What is passive income? you know, then I can say, I go back and hook in my story. Now, again, if I know this person and they're in the room with me, and let's say that I know it's a cosmetologist. Let's say that, that for some reason, it's my girlfriend from another salon and she's also into cosmetology. I can say, well, I, I love this phrase. I don't know about you, but for me, you see how that just softens is I'm not saying you need to do this. I'm saying, well, I don't know about you, but for me, so well, I don't know about you, but for me, it was a big aha moment when I realized that I could buy my own building for my salon and end up having a paid for building in 20 years. And she might say, well, I'm renting space at a shopping center. How did you do that? Mm -hmm. See, and I'm just going to go hook my story. I'm going to say, well, 
you know, I remember when I was a single mom working two jobs, minimum wage, I finally found out that I could get into the salon industry. And then when I realized that I could buy my own building, um, I started to pursue that. And so now I have a course on how I teach other folks how to do that. Really? Where's your course? You know, it's the, it's, it, what it does is it just creates interest and my storytelling becomes my marketing. And all I'm doing is telling her a story. So she doesn't feel like she's being sold on any of my courses at all. Yeah, Sherry had to go. So yes, yeah, Sherry, I see that it's time. So she jumped off. So my girlfriend that I'm talking to, she doesn't feel like I'm hitting her over the head with, you need to buy my courses and I've got this program and, and here's what it costs and you need to go here and sign up. And, you know, as a matter of fact, I, I'm not even mentioning, you know, I'm, I'm just answering her questions. It's very conversational. And then if she says, well, where can I see these courses? And then I can say, oh, I'll, I'll send you a text later, you know, because we're at a pizza party, you know, right, right. you know, I'm not going to try to sign her up right there over, over pizza. I'm going to, you know, send her something later. And the next day I'm going to say, hey, I'm just going to follow up. Hey, our conversation last night, you expressed an interest. Here's, here's the link. If you're ever interested, you can check it out. So it's a very soft sale, so to speak, but I'm weaving my story in. And when she sees that, when she sees my story in action, she knows that it worked. And I'm sitting right now in a condo that I paid cash for in Sarasota because of my real estate investments. And so folks that know that, and, they'll, and, and this works all the time, I'll just post something on social media like, hey, we're at the condo this week. Somebody will go, must be nice you know, that you have a house in Ohio and you've got a condo in Florida. And see, that is a perfect door opening because what they're saying is, is I don't know how you did that. Right. I don't know how to do that. And I don't know how you did that. But what they say is, is must be nice or, or, you know, maybe someday when I win the lottery, I'll buy a condo in Florida or, you know, and so what they're saying is, is I don't know how you figured that out. And so then I can just weave my story right in on social media. You know, I can say, yeah, it was a real struggle for me too. I was a single mom making minimum wage, but I finally figured out how I could invest in real estate. And then somebody might say, well, how did you do that? <laughs> so you see how I just weave my story in and I'm, and I'm building relationships. I'm not trying to, I, I love to build my business organically. I don't like to go out there and just, you know, pay a bunch of money to, to have those funnels that you've got three minutes to sign up or this great $5,000 deal is going to go away. We've all seen those. Mm -hmm. And even though it's information we'd like to have, you feel very pressured and you're thinking, I don't know, I don't think I can spend that kind of money. Wonder if it's not what I'm thinking it's going to be once I spend that kind of money. And then if we've ever spent that kind of money, and realized it really isn't what we thought it was going to be, or really didn't give us the solutions that we needed, then we're thinking to ourselves, well, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to fall for that again. And so this is a very organic way to build your business by just constantly referring back to your story. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, that makes sense. Okay, um, let's jump over. I know we're getting close to the top of the hour here. Let's jump over. Karen, do you have any comments or thoughts on the presentation today? Hope you're on mute. My only thought, I think it's really good, but um, my thought is you have done some impressive things and uh, I haven't done, done really impressive things, so my story wouldn't be as, you know. Well, now don't feel that way because I always felt I had not done very impressive things. I mean, all all I did is is in in the again remember that hero's journey when I was at the bottom of the barrel thinking, what do I do now? I ended mm -hmm. up going to cosmetology school, and again, I can that can be a whole presentation on my part, but I remember I didn't know how I was going to pay for it, because remember, I was the single mom with these minimum wage jobs, and I didn't know how I was going to pay and have time to go to cosmetology school, and I remember that being a huge struggle. And at 40 years old, there was folks way ahead of me, and I was really beating myself up thinking I should be 
I should have this better figured out by age 40 than what I have, because there were folks my age or even younger that seemed to have arrived already. And heck, I didn't even know what road to go down, let alone feeling like I had arrived. And so I really struggled with that as well. So what it is, is you want to, and, and if we've got any writers in the house, when if you're if you write if you blog if you journal if you write at all you have to to deep down find that emotion that you were feeling find that emotion and write about that emotion write about what you were seeing what you were hearing what you were tasting what you were touching you know how it really felt write that into those bullet points and and that will make your story super impactful because folks out there have felt the same thing and they'll connect with that they'll relate to that so you don't have to have acquired huge things or done great things or whatever and even for me it's taken me four years to even write my courses and create these groups. And um, I think Sherry had a phone call because she's coming back in. And so um, what happens is, uh, you know, once you start writing that down, folks will actually connect with you because of, of they, they'll say, Karen gets me. Uh, when I read her story, she, she gets me. I was right there. Okay. And even now, I, I even now will say to Mark sometimes, I should be so much further ahead at my age. And he just looks at me like I've, you know, got three eyes or something. He goes, you're crazy. <laughs> he said, he said, you know, he, he has a view kind of like you care. And he's like, look at all the stuff you've done. And I go, yeah, but look at all the stuff I haven't done, you know? And so you have to, I think, just uh, accept you are where you are. And, and once you start to create your story, you're just going to show how the whatever products or services that you want to bring to the table, how you can help someone else. And I'll be honest, I don't always connect with someone that is 10,000 miles ahead of me. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, the guy that roll, I mean, I'm talking about passive income. Well, the guy that rolls in with the, you know, the Mercedes and the Jaguar and the, the huge house, you know, out on the, out on the, the ocean front and mansion. I don't connect with that guy, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, he can talk all day long and I'm, and I'm, and, and sell, want to sell me his products. And I don't feel like I can connect with him. But I can connect with a, another person that's slightly ahead of me is where I can connect because I can say, OK, I can see that they've found their footing, you know, to do to, to be a speaker. So now I can maybe work at being a speaker. But some guy that's making multi millions and, and has his own jet flying all around the world as a speaker, I don't connect with that. Because I'm like, oh, yeah, he's probably got a whole team and he's got money and he's got, you know, he's probably born with a silver spoon in his mouth, as they say. And, you know, and, he, you know, so who am I to try to 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 do what he's doing? But if I find somebody local that's that that their story really impacts me, then I can say, yeah, I can connect with that person. And so, again, be you, be where you are and who you are and bring your story to the table. And I, I say this all the time, your tribe will find you. Your tribe will find you. You don't have to try to, to be like somebody else to attract their tribe. You be you and your tribe will find you. Love it. <laughs> okay, is that helpful? Helpful. All right. Um, Bernetta, any last comments? No, this was, this was all, it was good. This was good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Perfect. Sherry, I know you jumped off for a minute and back on, we were just talking about, Karen said she didn't feel like she had a good enough story. <laughs> and so that's what we were chatting about. Any last words from you, Sherry? I wasn't sure if I was on mute yet or not. Um, so Bernetta, I've been there. I felt like I had no story to tell. 
several years back. And I just kept digging at what was uniquely me. So what, and sometimes it really takes digging down and having having some of those questions answered about character. What is your real true character? What are your true values? Um, a book that you might want to uh, go to to start is called Your Secret Name. Mm -hmm. And it really goes into really looking at your own personal identity, looking at the names that you've been given, that society has given you, and find out what's uniquely you. I will agree with Sherry. The book, Your Secret Name by Carrie Oberbrunner is a good one. And I have also gone through that book. And so for those of you that have known me for such a short time, my secret name came out teacher on the other end. And so- And, and, my, and mine came out worthy. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, um, you know, once you go through some- some programs like that, you, uh, you, you get a better feeling for who you are. But um, I go back to what I was saying to Karen is when you write your story, even with that template, is to think about how you felt at each one of those bullet points and try to infuse that into your writing on how you felt at that point. How did I feel when I was at rock bottom and the salon closed and the corporate job was getting ready to go away. I felt panicked. Well, writing the word that I felt panicked, I had to actually sit for a minute and feel that panic again. I had to go back and revisit how I really felt so that I then knew what to write in the next two sentences. I had to really think about what that meant to me at that time, because that is the audience that I wanted to reach at that point of my story. I wanted to reach all those folks that felt that kind of panic. And so if you can write your, your bullet points like that, you will definitely connect with your tribe. And again, your tribe will find you because they'll, they'll feel it. Kyle, any comments from you on all of this conversation? Yeah, you guys uh, almost have brought me to tears over here. Um, you know, Karen, you were talking about you feel like you don't have a story. And then Kathy was saying, well, just tell your experience because you'll find your tribe. And then Sherry, you said, just be your authentic self. You know, this is all stuff I've been struggling with for years, too, um, because I'm gay. And in my, the early years of my career, I wanted to try to hide that so I could appeal to as many different people as possible. Um, Cause you know, there are people out there who would choose not to work with me because I'm gay, but um, I'm growing and evolving and learning and, and I'm, you know, I've thrown that out the window. Now I'm gay as hell. Um, <laughs> they can deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I'll find my tribe and I'll, I'll, I'll track the people that want to work with me and who want to be surrounded by me. And if they don't want to work with me because of that, well, then that's their loss. And, and again, your, your tribe is going to find you. Um, what's, what's the show on HDTV, the guy that does the multi-million dollar? Have you watched that, Kyle? Um, I mean, there's lots of them, up the, the multi-million dollar, like the, the million dollar listings or whatever. Yeah, it's the one on HDTV, and the, and the guy is, is definitely gay, and he, he is a huge hit, and his tribe has definitely found him. He does a, a couple. He does the million dollar listings and the uh, lottery winners. The lottery winners. Yeah, yeah. My, my, my lottery dream home. Yeah, me and my yeah. grandma watched that together. <laughs> <laughs> I love that show. I do too. And and I, I every time I watch it, I, I think I think he could be my best friend. He could they be have, my They have an episode where they came to Columbus. Well, next time yeah, you gotta <laughs> But yes, Kyle, please be who you are. It never works when you try to be someone different. And nope. it also is a perfect journey when, uh, when you're very authentic. And as you evolve, in whatever way you evolve, you will, again, be your authentic self and your, your tribe will be attracted to you because they see how vulnerable you are. Because you know what? Whatever you're struggling with, thousands of other folks are struggling with the exact same thing. And, and they'll gravitate toward you because again, if you're just slightly ahead of them, if you were, 
you know, now again, they're not going to connect. What is the guy's name that does my lottery dream home? I don't even remember his name. Do you remember his name? Anyway, a lot of folks can't connect with him. You know, they don't feel that they can connect with him because, you know, he's this TV star and he's, you know, jet setting around, you know, doing these lottery dream homes. Um, and so they don't feel they can connect with him. They, they feel like they, they could if, if he were a more local level to them, but right. they don't feel because of who he is that they can really connect with him. And so if you are just your authentic self, your tribe will definitely connect with you because they see that you're making it happen and that you're, you're basically, um, you know, paving the way, so to speak. And that's what folks want to see is that somebody is just ahead of them paving the way. And those are the folks that feel like they can connect with you. So don't feel less than. And that's probably my biggest takeaway today is, is don't feel like you don't have something to offer in your story because you do, because your story is uniquely yours, which is why your story becomes the cornerstone of all of your marketing, because it's your story. This is my favorite subject of all of the build a better business, because everything stems from your story. It, it goes backwards to your VPS is just the one sentence version of your story. Then as you start creating your products and services, it's around your story is what you're creating. And you saw on, on my website where I had the fitness and then I had the long-term real estate, then the short-term real estate, as you went down that row, it, it's my journey. You can see that it's my journey as my products evolved. And they can connect back to my story in 100% of the time. So anyway, I loved our conversation today. We've gone over a little bit. Thank you so much for being with me. Uh, you can go to kathybenner.com to find everything. That's the easy way to find it. You can go to Kathy Benner International Academy. But if you go to kathybenner.com, it links right over to the academy. And so everyone, please, please, please um, enjoy be safe out there. Stay warm. I don't know where everyone's from, but even in Florida, we're a little chilly today. So, uh, and we'll see everyone next time and feel free to connect with me again, kathybenner.com. You can connect with me through the website. There's a link there. If you want to talk um, individually, if you want a little more information or need some help on putting your story together, I'd be happy to help you. Okay. Thank you. Kathy. All right. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you soon. Bye.